Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. That was a very aggressive hey. I hope I didn't scare anyone. <laughs> you're like, Jesus Christ, Rich, you're coming in hot, dude. All right, I had no idea what to do for a video. I was stumped, but I need to get some momentum going on the YouTube front. So I thought what we would do is we could look at the completed um, heritage auctions from yesterday. Um, I've had... Um, I've had, uh, I wouldn't call it a relationship with Heritage, but um, I've been checking out Heritage auctions for many, many years. Um, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not like super market savvy. I am with original art, but in terms of comics and stuff like that, um, it's definitely like over the last few years evolved like tremendously. But um, it is really, really fun to see what what our hobby generates in terms of income. I know a lot of people now um, this kind of lean towards digital art and, you know, we've talked about the value of, of original comic art just in general. Uh, and you know, you'll see examples of that now, but I mean, look at, this is insane. So this Batman number one comic book, I know this is an original art, sold for $265,000 for a 3.5 like grade. I mean, it's super cool. But holy macamole, that is a lot of money. 265 grand for Batman number one. It's exciting, right? I want to get you, you know, the thing is, is look, drawing is a very, very hard, it's a hard thing to do. It's very time consuming. You spend a lot of time uh, alone. It, you torture yourself with it. You know, you have dreams and goals that you want to achieve. You want to get good. So let's check out the Steve Ditko. Shall we, friends? <laughs> So let's see what we got here. All the the lettering is very cool, beautiful handwriting. Man, it's just gorgeous. Uh, and then we've got nice Steve Ditko Spider Man. I I missed the price. It was obviously over two hundred and sixty grand because they kind of go in order from expensive to least expensive. I don't personally feel like I've ever seen this piece before. That's not to say that I haven't. I don't recognize it, but. Uh, that's cool. And how much did that go for? Let's see. That went for $432,000. Woo! <laughs> Don Heck, Tales of Suspense. I I know Don Heck's name. I really don't know his work very good, but uh, this is... Is this uh, Iron Man? Oh, is this a whole 12-page story? Hold on, let, let me see. Sometimes they have full stories. I don't think this is in a single page. This went for a grip of money, though. Nice inking. Really, really beautiful, like, lines on this. I like this panel with this guy running. So straightforward. This is this is a really nice panel, too, with these silhouettes. I'm a big fan of um, silhouette figures. In fact, I'm going to be goofing around with some very shadowy figures today. So, look, seriously, I, I mentioned this briefly in, in one of my last YouTube videos. If you're not following me on Instagram or Facebook, you really are making a big mistake. Um, I've had thousands of people start following me over the last few weeks. My Instagram is doing really well right now. I, I kind of had neglected it for YouTube for several years, but I've been actively posting Blaster Kid art, and it's, it is really going good. So this is a beautiful Dark Knight art. I wonder if a friend of mine bought this. Let me see. I want to see one thing real quick. So this Dark Knight page went for $228,000, um, and uh, I do have a friend that collects this stuff. Man, that is a great page. Whew. I love I love the little bit of grit on the tail those that little bit of dry brush really really is beautiful because you see how like all these other silhouettes are nice and um uh solid uh but uh man this is gorgeous look at that oh my god so cool i love i love seeing the the opacity of the ink too like it's a little more watery right here and the comic generally that stuff won't show up but uh, I, I find it really really cool to see on the things so what you know Scott Williams is a big big fan of Klaus Janssen and Frank Miller as most people are but you can really actually see sometimes when you look at this stuff now I'm sometimes Frank would go in an ink thing so I don't I'm not 100% sure who this inks are right here but you'll see techniques like this where Scott will put a real heavy line on stuff and then take it to like thin um, and um, you know look this stuff isn't what I would consider super super finesse in terms of like line quality but it's just really really nicely done like i love this right here and then just these few little thin lines it's just really really cool stuff um 
And uh, this is great. Man, that's so cool. Uh, but what I was going to say is uh, look in the description box. And I'll have links to both Instagram and, and Facebook. But that's why I haven't been doing YouTube videos is I've been drawing about like 13 hours a day right now. Um, and, uh, you know, look, Blaster Kid is like I'm working on it really, really hard. Uh, and um, I just have to have to. I, it's like an addiction, to be honest. It's really actually difficult for me to stop working on it. Um, but uh, that's good. All right, so this. I really, I have a regret on this, not this a piece of original art, but I used to have these comics, and I didn't really like the interior art. I'm, I am a fan of Aparo, to be clear, but um, I tore the covers off of all the books. <laughs> it just kept the Mignola covers. But I ha I'd had them for years, and just at some point I was really trying to slim down my comic book collection, and I was like... These these aren't really like they're they're never gonna be valuable blah blah blah. I was wrong, but but uh, yeah. So I ripped the covers off of them and just kept the Mignola covers. <laughs> a couple of them are pretty expensive now. I don't know I don't know the condition of my books to be clear. So it's not like I didn't have like nine point nine you know mint copies. I don't remember them being in bad shape though to be clear. But it is what it is. What can you do? I had too many comics. <laughs> All right, we've got a Jack Kirby Sid Shores. This went for 168000 This is pretty cool. I like the gun. Already already a fan. Hmm. Yeah, this is interesting. You know, so, like, look, as as someone who's, who's inked professionally and draws pencils and inks their own stuff now, I've always found rough style inks very fascinating to me, and 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 I like this. I actually think this looks really cool. But I I sometimes wonder like, is it a style that they go for, or is it that they don't have as good of control as like um, uh, a Mike Royer or something like that? You know what I mean? Where it's like you've got these guys that are like cyborgs with their with their brush skills or pen skills, and then you've got other people that are that you know, can do really good techniques. They've got good feathering and stuff like that, but they're just a little more heavy handed, a little more, you know, maybe their eyes aren't as good or they're just a little more reckless or they get impatient. Um, and you get this really cool, like kind of more gritty look. And it's hard if you're someone that has good control or, um, is a little bit of a neat, neat freak, um, to, to like let your stuff drift this direction i've always found it very challenging the only way i can do it is to be like fully reckless and then i crash and burn too much uh less now but um for a, for a long time i would have a lot of disasters <laughs> still do just not as many <laughs> What's this? Oh, so here's a Jim Apparel. Nice. And I, like I said, I am actually a fan of Jim Apparel. Wow, this is like a whole story. Well, we won't go through this whole thing, but if you if you sign up to Heritage, you can get access to all this stuff. John Constanza, letterer, Mike DiCarlo, inker. Now, this is before my time. I didn't start collecting until the 90s, so um, I, I went back. I, I would buy collections occasionally off of people, and so I acquired a lot of different stuff. But but uh, you know, my taste was, you know, I was at a young part of collecting. I'm gonna check this out. I'm a big fan of these old uh, covers. I always think they're cool looking. I just wanted to see it. Air. I gotta have air. It's he, Doctor Strange. He looks kind of nice there. And that went for how much? A lot. Hold on, let's see what it was. <laughs> like one hundred and eighty thousand. It's a nine two to be fair, but one hundred and eighty grand. Does your uncle have this in his closet? Was he a, was he a nerd as a kid? And your mom's like, ah, oh, my brother and his comics. He probably still has them. <laughs> Get him. <'em. laughs> you need to call your uncle and be like. Bro, comics, get them. <laughs> so here we got, oh yeah, this. So there's been some Frank Miller and Joseph Rubenstein um, Wolverine pages selling recently, and another one sold for like 65000 This one went for a hundred grand. This is why I tell you guys, draw on paper. <laughs> Look, if you love digital, you lay your stuff out digitally, but put it on paper. <laughs> got to it's funny because I, in a weird way, I was I was thinking this the other day. 
the the skill of inking. I mean, I already have it, so it's nothing that I need to develop. Other than that, I I always want to learn more and improve my skills. But but um, yeah, if ever there was a time to be able to learn to pencil and ink, and again, it's I think laying stuff out on the computer is fantastic. It's it's you know if you have to thumbnail a 60 page book you could do it on paper definitely i mean and and you could even lay it out on the big board but if if you prefer to lay it out digitally um you know you can always print that out and do what people used to do with the xerox machine which is they blow up their thumbnail to 11 by 17 like j scott campbell does this he light boxes his structure and then he goes in and he draws the final page uh, on the big artboard um, so, you know, laying it on the computer and printing out your thumbnail and doing it that way, it's, it's the same thing. People, you know, use it different ways. So here's a Brian Boland, um, Wonder Woman cover, real nice piece, went for 199,000. <laughs> it's got the hair. It was funny cause we, I, the last video I did was a Brian Boland video, but this has got almost that, um, the spaghetti noodle, um, effect to it. I'm looking at the hair right now. What I'm doing is I've I've recently had questions on like people get confused on how to light um, dark hair. If I'm gonna point this out really fast and do a really quick version of it, okay? Like if if you look at any of these loops, okay, this is a loop of hair. This chunk of hair. First of all, most of his hair is chunks. It's a chunk of hair, chunk of hair, chunk of hair. What he's doing is he's lighting the top of it. So so if you could think of like a coil, the light is pretty consistently hitting it at about the same part of the coil. So that's not gonna help you draw hair, but that's kind of the theory behind the lighting is it's just hitting, like over here, it's kind of hitting the top planes. But um, it's just slow and steady. Look, a head of hair like this might take multiple hours to do. Uh, I had a head of hair and a beard on a piece I did recently. I think it took five or six hours just to do that. I mean, it's, you know, you have to commit to it. If you don't commit, you will acquit. Now this has got some discolorization. Uh, it's possible it was the glue that the paste ups were, were put down with. Um, and that could be just glue that was behind this Detective Comics logo, and that's what discolored, because the original art itself doesn't seem to be discolored. It's a pretty cool piece, honestly. I actually kind of like this. Has a little bit of almost like a Kevin Nolan vibe to me. You know, moving like as, as like Kevin Nolan would be, would like enjoy something like this. It's really nice. It's actually a really kind of, it's understated, but quite, quite attractive I, I, I like this um, and this is a nice pose this is fun we're hanging you guys are hanging with rich Kelsey where the hell are you <laughs> didn't think he was gonna get through this video without a shout out I can't I can't find Kelsey I'm gonna have to call him directly I try to avoid that it seems so serious <laughs> so this is trail of the tomorrow man by Thor it would be kind of cool if your name was Thor and that you drew Thor. I knew someone named Thor, believe it or not. I met him. Oh, no, his name was Rock. Sorry, I apologize. There is a band with a guy named Thor, though. <laughs> this is pretty cool. These are long brush lines, like these, these, these ink lines right here. It's hard. It's hard. Well, let me see. On 11 by 17 board, well, this could have been drawn oversized. This looks like what um, you can hold like a straight edge and actually run a brush along the side of it. It's a pretty, I consider it one of the harder inking techniques to learn. Um, but uh, that was possible what they did there. But um, yeah, that's not for the meek. So we've got a Sam Keith and Mike Dringenberg Sam Man page from issue number three. And this is 75,000 it'll open come on come on what's going on all right let's try this what the hell seriously gonna gonna play me like this heritage oh it's thinking hold on side let's let it think there it goes oh this is pretty nice wow wow this is cool 
if if you showed me this right here, I'm trying to think who I would think it is. I don't know if I would peg this as Sam Keith. This looks like Sam Keith, this fourth panel. This maybe. These almost remind me of like Ted McKeever or something like that. A little Sienkiewicz too. Uh, and and there's a few other people that were influenced by Sienkiewicz. But yeah, it's interesting. And, and at times it almost has a little bit of like a Bisley vibe. I, I noticed it, it was my first thought when I saw um, this kind of reminded me of Bisley and this too. Bisley could paint the shit out of this. All right, what do we got? I saw Richard Corbin and large breasts. So let's see what we got here. <laughs> it's weird. I don't know why. Um, oh, here he goes. Goodness gracious. This chick is stacked. And pantsless, or, or whatever they call it. Bottomless. Corbin is a very trippy artist. I've talked about this before whenever whenever Corbin um, pops up in the conversation. He's like someone that has different styles that like you you could definitely tell that this is a Corbin piece, but it's crazy how how his work varies. It's fascinating to me, especially as someone now who's kind of working on consistency, you know. I, I have a lot of fun doing single illustrations, um, but you know, when you're when you're when you're going to be drawing a character over and over again, you can't, you know, you can't have stuff change too much where you're like, oh, today I feel like long hair on this character. The next time it's, you know, you've got a something different. So this is a Harvey Kurtzman, Two Fisted Tales. I'm almost thinking we'll look at like one or two more pieces and then I'm going to go to a different completed auctions. Uh... Because there was one that ended a few days ago that I had some f personal friends sort of talking about. And again, you can always go back. Let's look at let's look at this Gil Kane piece. I mean, like I know they're they're all cool. Don't get me wrong. So if you're seeing something, you're like, oh, dude, seriously, you're not going to click on that one. This is nice. I feel like I've seen this before. Sometimes pieces. Um, will sell multiple times like someone will pick up a piece and you'll see it on heritage over years it'll it'll get sold and resold i don't know i assume that when you get it in person it's just not a keeper it sounds bad to say and i'm not saying that this piece is to be clear but i'm saying um it is interesting where you'll see pieces that are by very noted artists that are selling for a tremendous amount of money so here's a frazetta and we'll, I'll click on the McFarlane too. Oh man, this is nice. Holy shit. Oh God. <laughs> Talk to me. Woo. That is some good shit. 1975. Frazetta poured himself a hot cup of coffee, sat down in a comfy chair, and then fucking created some magic. Or he could have had a baseball game on and he was drinking scotch and had classical music on at the same time. And he was fighting grizzly bears. And then he painted this. Drew it. Drew it with ink. Man, this is so cool. Look at that. Damn, he's good. Whew. <laughs> the other thing that I found... <laughs> I found really hard right now is I'm so inspired and I'm drawing, you know, better than I kind of ever have in my life. And like, <laughs> I want to do everything. Like I wish that I could draw like five things at once during the day. It drives me crazy. Cause I'm like, ah, oh, I, I want to try that. I want to do this. I want to try that. I want to do this. And I have to be really, really disciplined. Um, and just, it's like, I have so like, I'm o overwhelmed with like excitement and, uh, inspiration which is a good place to be, but yeah, it is. It is funny, but every day I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> I, I've jokingly um, compared it to like you know when you give a dog like a bath and then you let it go in the backyard. <laughs> That's me right now. I'm like rolling in the dirt. I'm running in circles. I might take out the fence. <laughs> god, this is great. Palmiotti and Casada were really, really good together. I mean, Joe is just great in general, and he's obviously had other great inkers, but man, this is cool. 
a little bit of this reminds me of Rick Leonardi, who I'm a pretty big fan of. Rick's got a very stylized. Well, he's he's had a few different sort of looks in his stuff, but um, <clears throat> yeah, this is really good. But yeah, Joe's great. I'll be honest. There's a part of me, the selfish part of me, that's actually happy that he's not editor in chief at Marvel, only because I would love to see Joe just get back to drawing. Like if for the next ten years he only drew, I I would have no problem with that. I'd be very like excited to see um what uh, he'd be up to. This is interesting. I don't know what year Frank would have done this. It doesn't... Well, I mean, it says 86. Um, I've never seen this. It's funny because it normally, like, his pieces will tell kind of a story. Now, he may have he may have finished this up um, at, at, at any time. Uh, but, uh, yeah, there's not much of a story to this one, to be honest. It's like uh, he seems to be celebrating victory, but his face almost looks sort of scared and kind of confused at the same time so you know it's, it's still cool i mean all right let's see john bogdanov he is really good oh i remember this piece this is a cover isn't it it's a very weird colored cover if i'm not mistaken I have this comic. I'm nearly sure. It's like, uh, what is it? X Factor 61. Okay, yeah, I, I probably have that. Okay, um, ooh, the Travis piece. So this uh, Travis piece went up for auction. This is exciting. I And you know what? I've actually got kind of a fun story about this piece. So I actually did see Travis working on this piece. So I remember, you know, going into his office and him working on it you know and like i was like man that's cool each one of these pieces was a really um Tra travis was it it's travis charay i always have to uh i know that there's people that are new to collecting comic books and stuff like that and travis isn't as productive as he was um tw you know back back in the day um but uh he had gotten really, really good. This is right before I started working with him. I started working with him probably, oh man, two to three months after this. Um, but but I was friendly with him, and uh, I would, we were friends at this point. Um, and uh, I, I remember um, in particular him working on the boot, and uh, just really like these were so amazing. They're, they were so beautiful. This is all hand colored with watercolor pencil. Um, and, uh, boy, 52,000, boy, oh boy, incredible, so cool. Okay, so, what is this? Ooh, Mark Texaria, who knows, maybe we'll just keep going this way. Can we, can we sink as low as looking at pieces that sold for less than 50 grand? Or are we selling ourselves short? <laughs> I'm kidding, but... It's like, uh, this one only sold for 40 grand? Ah, oh, forget it. These are boring. Man. There is a part of me, though, I had said this to a friend of mine because I've, I've always wondered, Joseph Rubenstein in particular, and it's none of my business, obviously, but um, when I see old uh, Rubenstein pieces sell because Joe Inc., so many legendary people, there is a small part of me that hopes that he had kept some of this stuff and didn't sell it all in, like, the 80s or you know, like early eighties, um, for, you know, probably good money at the time, but just, I mean, any of these, if you're an older person, like, you know, I don't know what, how old Joe is, let's say he's in his sixties. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, I mean, this piece sold for $50,000, right? Yeah. 50,400. Um, you know, if you've got 10 of these in your closet, I mean, you've basically got like a retirement fund, uh, you know, that could probably take you to, to where you'll be living in the universe um <laughs> but uh yeah i don't i don't know you know and so it's like when those frank miller pieces that joe inked were selling i just there's a part of me in the back of my mind that just goes oh man i hope he i hope he i hope he has a couple of those or i hope that it's him selling them again it's none of my business but uh you know i just wish good things for artists <laughs> Jim Lee, Scott Williams. This is from the Frank Miller run, if I'm not mistaken. I think this is what All Star Batman, maybe issue six. Let me see. How's my three? Oh yeah, I don't think they got to six. That's cool. 
they got kind of grittier after this. I mean, this is still like Scott. Scott always does the real interesting, um, you know. And, and and look, you know, I'm not saying that it's a Klaus Jansen or a Frank Miller thing, but we did see on that one thing the the dry brush on the horse, but then the nice more slick lines. So. Let's see. Ooh, look at this. Damn. Ooh. Ooh, that nice. Damn. Oh, yeah. That's some gritty inks. Oh, what a great shot. Well, this is fun. This is a nice way to start the day. I want to thank all my patrons, too. Thank you guys so much. I've been putting a lot of... Um, well, there's always been a lot of lesson material, but I've been uploading um, other um, works in progress for them that uh, uh, I'm not showing on Instagram. And then um, also, uh, I'm going to do tutorials on the different techniques that I use for drawing stuff, penciling it, how I, how I think about shapes, and then how I ink stuff. So it'll be good. But there's already, I don't know, 700 videos on Patreon, so there's tons of shit. It's dense. All right, so Robert Crumb. I don't know. Let's see. Frank Miller, Klaus Jansen. There's a Brian Otley piece. Let's see. Something a little different. This almost looks like Chris Stevens. Um, oh, it's a whole story. Wow. Oh, it's nice. It's really good. It's really interesting. It's kind of like. It's so clean, but it's got like just the nice amount of detail. It's really nicely drawn. Beautiful hands. This is really, really good. This is nice. Like understated, but really, really good. Oh, wait, I wanted to... So this is the whole 20-page story of Invincible 107. I wanted to see... Um... Let me just peek at the thumbnails real quick. Uh, let's check out this one. Eduardo Rizzo used to sell Hunter Bullets issues as full books. So. Wish I could remember how much they were. I want to say that they were $7,000 for a full issue of Hunter Bullets. This was years ago. But, um, you know, was that right? Seven grand? It was a flat, it was a flat amount. You do 12 books a year, though. That's an extra eighty, ninety thousand dollars $90,000 in your pocket on top of getting paid to do all the work and royalties, probably, because Hunter Bullets sold in trades really well. So definitely good. And then, oh, he didn't do the covers, though. Those The covers were Dave Johnson. Here's a joke. Sada. Oh, I've seen this before. This is funny because this is when Jay Lee, too, was working from pencils. He still does. Um, but you can actually, this can be colored and turned into inks digitally, um, or, or like you can you can go in and kind of tweak the um, channels and whatnot and actually kind of turn it into a pseudo inked piece. It, it works for some stuff, honestly. I don't completely hate the look. There's very particular, like, this is perfect content for it, which is it's a little bit organic and a little more sort of, um, you know, uh, ethereal uh, other things that need to be more exact I don't think it works as well but boy oh boy Joe's so good yeah, this is great alright this is fun I'm like I really would need to get to work though so let's we gotta well you guys are gonna kill me if I don't oh, we've got some heavy hitters we got a Perez, a John Byrne and a Jim Lee at, look like X-Men this is nice Oh, that's cool. Good, good stuff. Okay, and we're going to look at this George Perez. New Teen Titans. I've seen this piece before. Very iconic. Ah, oh, it's cool. I thought, 
I thought for a split second this was someone's hand reaching into his trunks because it looks like this is like the thumb and this is like the side of the hand. And I was like, what is this woman doing? <laughs> Get your mind out of the gutter, Rich, you sick, sick bastard. All right, what do we got here? Wow. This is crazy. All right, we're going to zoom a zoom in. Zoom a zoom, Rich. Do it. So I'm working on a war double page spread. I actually scrapped it. I'd, I'd worked for five days on a double page spread and I ultimately decided that it didn't have the mood that I wanted. And there was a couple of things that I had drawn that I felt like didn't completely make sense with the, all the action going on. So I've got it nearly repenciled, but you would be surprised at how long something like this can take to draw. This is a lot of work and it's a lot of real estate on a page. And then he's got all this stuff down here too, but double page spread with like dudes in armor and gear and stuff like that it's no joke it's a tremendous amount of work i was penciling and inking my piece to be clear so that doubles the amount of time that you would spend on it but um uh you know you figure most pencilers do about a page a day maybe a page and a half or, or i mean um uh maybe a page every two to two and a half days oh j scott campbell spawn uh but then if you ink if you're inking it and it took two and a half days to pencil then it's going to take you know probably two and a half days to ink too oh, this is cool someone said uh they were looking at one of my pieces and they're like oh i was expecting this to look more like j scott campbell they probably had seen the crystal planet stuff i did which is more cartoony um but uh i i really do personally feel that i actually have a lot of j scott campbell in my work he was one of my favorite artists when i first started collecting and definitely when i when i initially started drawing and even learning the ink um a lot of the practice stuff that i did tended to kind of look like his stuff and and uh, I ended up working on Gen 13 too for a couple of years with Alex and um, Jeff, so uh, as an assistant. But uh, I think all that kind of sort of put it a little bit. It's a little bit my DNA, but um, I tend to put more detail. Man, this is great. I, I really am a big fan of the way that Jeff draws hands. They're very cartoony and they're very um, like like identifiable, identifiable as Jeff. But I think that they're very cool. This is great. Nice things. Is this Sandra? Is this Gardner? Or is it someone else? Oh, Townsend. Yeah, it's cool. All right. It's funny because I did um, a double page spread piece with um, Jeff that I wonder what it would sell for now. Probably a lot. I'm just kind of looking right now. Uh, I'm probably missing something good. I'm kind of blanking out. Here's a Bernie Wright, so let's see what this is. Oh, you know what? Let's do this really quick. We'll, we'll, um, <laughs> I wanted to look at Bernie Wrightson the other day, so we'll, we'll look at this, but then let's, we'll look at like a Frankenstein piece or two, and then we'll, then I'll call, uh, and I'll, I'll look up just Bernie completed auctions. This is nice. Okay, so let me go back, and then what I'm going to do is go to the tippy-tippy top and put in right so Completed. Uh, oh, well, that's not going to work. Let's do Bernie Wrightson. Sorry. Bernie Wrightson, original art. <coughs> and well, it's more than 14 past completed auctions. Oh, it's doing it only in this thing. Let me do this. I need to go back to the main page. Right. Now I can do it. Because it was only searching that that um, lot. Here we go. All right. So this is interesting. And I, I it, it is a little sad that it, this is so yellow. And I don't know if they just uploaded the scan this yellow for some weird reason. Uh, but this sold for $1.2 million. And it's a banger of a bright... And it's not a great scan of it either. So I don't know if they did it to um, thwart uh, bootlegging of some sort or what, because it's really, really unusual that Heritage would have such an unusual scan. Now, it is totally, totally possible that this piece is yellowed that much, because this does look like a photo of the artboard, but I, I've never seen another Wrights and Frankenstein piece that has yellowed this much. This is extreme. Uh, I mean... 
Uh, but it really is a phenomenal piece. Man. So I'll explain why I was interested in looking at Bernie Wrights and stuff, um, other than the fact that this stuff is really cool to look at. But as I've been working the last like month or so, uh, or a couple months, um, I, I've i real detailed stuff at times. And um, what I was curious of is I hatch more than Wrightson does, where Wrightson will do kind of thicker lines that turn to black and I tend to all all keep I'll do you know like one hatch line one one pattern and then I'll put another pattern over it and if I need it darker I might put a third pattern if I need it darker than that I might put a fourth pattern but there's a point where it starts to look a little tacky to me and it just starts to look like a dumbass hatching the shit out of stuff with really no sort of concept of what it is because once what happens is is generally when I lay down hatches, I'm creating form, and I, I'm pulling lines over form, and then I'm pulling lines to wrap around form. When you put a third hatch on it, then now all of a sudden you've basically um, taken away that idea, and then you put a fourth hatch, then it's it's really actually starts to flatten stuff out. And so what I was curious about is with, with um, how do you get something to look almost black but have like minimal lines on it? And so what, what like Franklin Booth, Joseph Clement Coles, the, the, the old school pen and ink style is it's just the lines get thicker and the whites get thinner. So it's not rights and specific, but I it was I was like I wonder does Bernie does he hatch I couldn't remember. People will compare my stuff sometimes to rights and because it's like darker material, but I don't really I don't really ink like rights and I, I it's his style is is different than mine. The the way that I render is different. Um, but uh, his stuff is awesome. But I was it's like here's hatches you can see in here. There's like two hatches, but it's not three. You know, it's two. But they're thick lines, they're thicker lines, and that's what creates the darkness. Up here, you can see there's still just two patterns. A little bit of a third one sort of creeping in some sideways things. But, um, you know, it starts to look a little willy-nilly, you know. Willy-nilly. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's cool. Oh, Frankenstein, Frankenstein. All right, I need to go. It's almost one o'clock, and I got a rock. Let's do one more rights in. What's my go-to? Uh, I do like these. We'll do two more rights in. <laughs> That's really weird. The quality of these scans is funky. I, it's the, I, you know, it's really weird. Again, being on Heritage as long as I've been, it's it's I find it interesting that the rights and scans seem to be um, not very well scanned. I've seen this piece in person. It's not blurry. <laughs> but yeah, this has like got like a soft focus on it. Or I'm my eyes are dying. All right. I got to go for real. I love you all. I don't know when I'll be back, but I'll guarantee that I'll be posting a couple of times on Instagram today, whatever I'm drawing. So if you want to get your, you want to see some good art, some great new Richard friend masterpieces. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but uh, yeah, follow me. I'm telling you, people are seem to really be enjoying it. I got more likes on a piece recently than I've ever had in my life um, on Instagram. And it's just the beginning of this. Wait till I get going. I'm just getting warmed up right now, to be honest. So another couple of months, forget about it. Um, but anyway, all right, I'll talk to you guys later. Have a great day, and uh, I'll be back. Bye.